Okay, here we go, our number two. Dr. Bill Deagle is with us once a week. He is uh, on Thursdays, and tonight's the night, and this is the hour. Hello, Bill. Welcome back. How are you? Uh, good. I'd like to split the show, the first half, dealing with all the nuclear and the other craziness. In the second half, I want to deal with the uh, part of the solutions is to change the way people look at everything from uh, their personal problems to pollution to uh, the idea of wellness. Uh, I had an interesting You're going discussion. to try to change people? Well, we're going to have Sounds to Sounds a little them. suspect to me. Hey, well. You must uh, be uh, one of those people. untrustworthy types, terrorists, yeah. they call them. Well, the main thing is we've got to change people who want to be changed. Yeah. The, the main thing that people do first is they ask better questions, as they say, the tagline on our show. Uh, I had on the first hour of the program today Dr. Sam Milham, and he's written he's, a book called yeah. Dirty Electricity. Great guy. And it was interesting. Uh, we've had him on many times. He'll be back on probably monthly. And uh, Sam is a retired doctor, and he goes around with his oscilloscope and his electronic equipment. And he's written this. He's actually one of our teachers in the Academy of Environmental Medicine, along with Dr. Uh, Bernhoft. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm in the process of putting together a federal lawsuit here in San Diego County against San Diego Gas and Electric <clears throat> and the Public Utilities Commission. And it's going to be filed in federal court. And if I'm clever enough, which we're hoping, uh, everybody keep your fingers crossed, it won't get turfed out. If it isn't, it will be converted by a group of five attorneys in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, that work with Jonathan E. Moore. They're part of his legal team. Uh-huh. And we're going to try to convert this to a federal class action lawsuit. Now, that'll be out of my hands at that point. Right now, people can't join it because it's my suit just yeah. against San Diego Gas. Yeah. And the three grounds that we're going to file against are basically non-thermal damage to the population, unjust enrichment, which is a RICO violation. <clears throat> and the third area uh, is the area that they're actually putting public in danger. For example, the San Bruno fire, we know that the, the currents that are generated by s- switching more power supplies actually can trigger off gas fires. And we know hmm. that the kind of systems they're using actually degrade power lines water lines, et cetera, because it dumps dirty electricity that degrades power lines and water lines and can have an effect on infrastructure such as gas line ruptures. So we can actually speed them. <clears throat> we have proof of that in that legal case. Now, what is, the reason why I say that is uh, over the last couple of visits we had with Dr. Sam and with uh, our ex- expert from Less EMF, and that is a dentist who's also a medical uh, a, an engineer, uh-huh. My name is Emil de Toffel from Lessie. I'm one of our companies that supplies equipment for us for testing your home or office or building, like a gigahertz solution for looking at your smart meters and oscilloscope and spectral analyzers and magnetometers. And I've acquired over the last three years all this equipment, so I've got everything. <clears throat> and the, the easiest piece of equipment is a $10 or $15 AM radio. Tune it just a little off a channel, and you can walk around your house, <clears throat> and if your channel gets jammed, then you've got dirty electricity. It could be a it could be a step-down transformer for your computer. It could be a, 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 a dimmer switch. Yeah. It could be bad wiring in your wall. But that channel will actually start, you'll start to see a jamming of the AM channel. So mm-hmm. it's easy to just walk around with an AM radio. Now, the reason why I say this is <clears throat> it turns out that uh, a few weeks ago, Emil sent me an article that dealt with the uh, stress that happens with el- dirty electricity, and it actually now is published in the National Library of Medicine with a lot of references of specific gene tests you can do, specific oxidative marker tests, et cetera. In other words, we have physical tests we can do to show you're at higher risk, but everybody is. <clears throat> There's just subsets of population because of their genetics and their previous exposure. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, the exact same things happen to tissue as happen from ionizing radiation, micronuclei, DNA breaks, oxidative uh, induction of DNA, so you get 8-hydroxy, 2 prime deoxyguanosine, oxidized fatty acids, disrupted cellular proteins and structure of mitochondrial crystagoli. Literally everything you see with radiation occurs with non-ionizing. Now, we have solutions, and they're nutraceutical solutions and technological. <clears throat> and the, one of the problems I see is we're probably not going to change the, the, the momentum toward bad financial decisions worldwide, Correct. the momentum toward war worldwide, yeah. or the momentum toward societal breakdown worldwide. But what we can do is we can insulate ourselves by taking the right nutraceuticals, not taking the toxic drugs, knowing what drugs are safe, and there's a very tiny number, maybe about 1 in 10. By the way, a Most lot of drugs, supplements, uh, as Bill will tell you, are not pure, not wholesome, and not good for you. That's right. The well, the ones truth. we carry are of a, a class that is stellar. We're yeah. talking about seven-star products that are so unique, so powerful, and we have single labs in the world that can provide. Yeah. And the reason is that if you if you don't take protection now, if you don't detox your body from 
radiotoxins from Fukushima, heavy metals, fluoride, etc. And you add now electrotoxins from dirty electricity, smart meters, etc. Even the Zigbee network that there is communicating on is the same as the microwave frequency of your microwave. So it's literally turning your house into a low-level microwave. So I tell people it's not optional to take nutraceuticals. And uh, I'll give an example. One of the things that's been shown very clearly, and this is comparing uh, you know, groups of the population that live in America, then they buy a building, they strip the electricity. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. And those farmers and those people, we don't even need to mention their name, mm-hmm. they lived at the beginning of the century 20 to 30 years longer than the average population in New York City. They lived 75 years compared to 45 in New York. And they still live longer, even though they eat a diet that you'd think would kind of clog all their arteries off and make them demented and do lots of things. Their children don't get vaccinated. They don't live with electricity at all, right? Yep. And <clears throat> they try to live a kind of much more subsistence life. They don't use pesticides and other right. things that will right. kill off the bees, like neonicotinoid pesticides. And this dirty electricity is jamming the the uh, navigation system for the pollinating insects. So they, they're literally, we're going to soon be stuck with gruel. You're the various ways we're screwing up the atmosphere. We're also putting nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere to literally weaponize the well, planet. Just, just wait until Google releases its 180 plus satellites to ring the planet and bathe it in Wi-Fi. Just wait. Right. Well, see, Wi-Fi, basically, your cells are Wi-Fi. And if you have the same frequencies, your cells don't know what the hell's going on. So specific enzymes tuned to a certain frequency, those frequencies were discovered by both the Russians and the Americans independently. And when they spied on each other, they were surprised that they found the same frequencies that were lethal to cells. These frequencies are blocked by things like the Stetzer um, capacitors, which are low-frequency toxic frequencies. And what they are basically is they're primarily harmonic frequencies for major minerals in the body, like zinc, metalloenzymes, and, uh, you know, collagen and, you know, uh, iron and other, you know, in other words, they're basically made major processes like glutathione peroxidase, sucroxid dismutase, the various enzymes to protect you, and minerals that can regulate enzyme activity and, and gene induction. So what they're doing basically is they're jamming your cellular communication. Now, uh, I want to walk this back because we did uh, half of the show last week. We talked about a little 12-year-old boy theoretically that I could try to help. It probably, considering this little boy, would require intensive work on this little fellow for a doctor to spending an hour a day at least for months, plus everything from IV therapy to enzymes to, you know, uh, plethora of nutraceuticals uh, to digestive enzymes to immunotherapy. And if he's bad enough, the poor little fellow might even require a bone marrow transplant. Most of the people that have been exposed even to lower-level radiation, like, say, on the Ronald Reagan, if they're relatively healthy now, they should have a bone marrow drawn, and this is advice to them, and they should have it banked right away because if they crash or they get cancer and their doctors suggest, you know, whole body radiation or chemotherapy, if they don't have a banked bone marrow, they're really screwed. So that's a smart move to make, and that's a medical move. There are medical things that I tell people to do that make sense, and there's other ones that don't. And the other thing you might do is check your relatives to make sure who has the closest match bone marrow if you crash because if you don't know this in advance, you can die because the doctors are scrambling around and don't have that data. Um, we're living in a world that I think is terminal. And uh, I know this is really bad news for people, but they need to hear it. Well, I, uh, I, I I, we, I've been saying it for many years. and so right, Well, you're one of the few yeah. bright lights that actually is brave enough to face the truth, but also optimistic enough to know that there's a segment of population that will be surviving colonies like the, the Postman, Correct. But, uh, Kevin Costner that will survive the uh, apocalypse huh. and they'll be uh, they'll connect by maybe the Pony Express post apocalyptic that there'll be a group of people that will basically say hey you know we're going to survive this we're taking uh, measures which might be simple nutraceuticals we're going to filter our water so we're not drinking radiotoxins we're going to stop eating meat because the meat's radio concentrating cesium-137 We're going to eat fish only that's non-filter feeders from the Atlantic Ocean because it's relatively non-toxic now if you have any fish at all or protein. We're going to eat nuts that are basically not downwind. that are going to concentrate radiotoxins like Mm -hmm. cesium, strontium, etc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we don't start doing these things, the human race, and this is my prediction, I've talked to all my top experts, including Dr. William Ray, who's been the president many times and founder of the Academy of Environmental Medicine, Dr. Bernhoff, Dr. Leo Hansen, many other specialists, the human race basically has 20 years. 
20 that's years. About, that's about it. And I, and I say 2034, 2035, human beings will be dumbed down, very sick, incapable of reproduction, so toxic that the healthcare system will well, break be walking the zombies, economy. A lot of them will just be idiots. It's and the drooling. doctors, of course, will, will resort to a eugenics-type medicine where they'll dispatch people with polypharmacy, memory care, which is what's already in Obamacare, where they make you a memory, and they give you a bathtub of narcotics to dispatch you with a video of your dying days in a in an extended care facility. It's it's sad, but it's so and true. That's, it, we yeah. can avoid that future if number one we become aware of the present and face it. But it means nutraceuticals now. It means a diet change. It means filtering your air in your home. It means being aware when you go and check on my site or on your site, Jeff. We've got all those sites up, including ours now for gamma detector. That this is not a joke. When we're looking at, at Isaiah 137, this is not a joke when we talk about fluoridation, GMO food that makes animals that you eat make your sperm count drop to zero or cause bone cancer. This is not a joke when we're dealing with radiotoxins that are bioaccumulating in the next four, five, ten years. The things that are happening to Japanese people now are going to happen to us. It's yes, not sir. a joke. Yeah, they are. They, actually, they already are happening to us. They are happening Slow. and people don't know it. Slow, incrementally, uh, well, not so along, slow, actually. Uh, all along we the had, coast. Listen to this. Within six weeks, six weeks, the highest intensive, largest intensive care nursery in Pennsylvania had a 42% increase in fetal mortality rate in premature babies. Yeah, well, our, 42%. It's up, it's up eight times here in, uh, in Washington State. Right. When you look at birth the, defects the like anencephaly, no brains. Yeah, eight times. Other right. uh, major brain defects like uh, the Falk cerebri and everything are gone. Mm hmm. Uh, it's massively increased. Yep. When we look at thyroid cancer, thyroid nodules, one of my favorite guys on TV is the guy and his lady, Torek and Christina on Flip or Flop. They kind of take homes, they're realtors, and they flip them. And they're up in Orange County. One of the nurses watched him and actually had a great big damn lump in the bottom of his neck. And poor Torek ended up with thyroid cancer. And it was bad enough he ended up with radiation. Now, I don't know the medical details, mm -hmm. but the rate of cancer not just on the West Coast, but across America and the whole Northern Hemisphere, mm -hmm. went up 400 to 800%, both benign nodules and thyroid cancer. And yeah, as these yeah. longer isotopes yeah. bioaccumulate, you're going to see more bone marrow cancers, heart failure, cardiac arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, dementia, gland failure, polyglandular failure, breast cancer, the research on small mammals. If cesium-137 is tied directly and linearly exponentially to breast cancer. So we're going to see breast cancer go orbital. And people say, like this guy that was in the tech guy that came in from, uh, his name was Sonny from Doc Data Doctors. Mm -hmm. He said he served on the Ronald Reagan from 2007 to 9. Yeah, that's was, uh, this is an interesting story, folks, so pay attention. Yeah, he said he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried about the radiation. I said, well, I said, well, the Ronald Reagan is now... They're considering dumping it in the ocean because they tried to remediate with many millions of dollars, stripping all the wiring and 18 ventilation. 18 months. 18 months in right. Seattle. And his eyebrows went up, and I said, and many of the crew now are dying after passing through the plume three times. And I said, you're not worried? You're not worried when 5,500 miles, those radioisotopes are just as hot and radioactive as when they arrive in the California coast as they arrive in Belarusia or over the poles or arrive in, in North Africa or anywhere. Those isotopes don't know where they've been traveling. Uh, as long as the isotope hasn't changed its atomic structure, it's still got its high-energy KEV electron emission, uh, neutron flux, or any other biological factor related to its, 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 its nuclear activity. I said, the, the nuclear chemistry, I said, I'm a nuclear chemist. I was a radiation doctor for ACOM, American College for Occupational Environmental Medicine. Took him, and I told him all this stuff, and his eyebrows really went up. <laughs> I said, you're not worried? I said, we don't know when or how or if it's going to go up. No. But we're going to monitor it. So we're looking only at gamma, which means we're only really looking at cesium-137. So if we look at our curve and all of a sudden we see a trend line where it's going up from 40 counts a minute to 60 to 70 to 80, uh -huh. we've got a problem, Houston. Yep. And when I said that to him, you could tell he shut up. He realized, like, oh, damn. I said, you know, people like you that try to dismiss it because it's okay, you're tough guys. Tough guy doesn't do it. When you're blasted with radiation, your bone marrow says, adios, guy, it was nice knowing you, or your skin peels off because you bump true. a wall, Absolutely. or you're starting to go blind because you get radiation-induced cataracts, yeah. or your brain starts to melt because your astroglial cells say, microglia are burning my brain cells to death, and they're dying. 
Well, just like the starfish. Just right, right, mush, just like the starfish. So, mush. as a doctor with uses radiation with respect, I have to tell people out there: we got every kind of pollution involved. We got GMO food, fluoridated water, uh, radiotoxins, bisphenol A is everywhere. Seven new chemicals every day. Now the latest, they're using seven, nanotechnology. Seven new every day. Seven new chemicals yeah, every and, day. And they use nanotechnology in industry mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Nanotechnology chemicals. like well, nanotech- that's, See, that's the big secret. Nobody talks about that anymore. And nanotechnology, we're talking about robot-induced nanotechs. It might be something like a nanotech paint that they use some special technique to mm-hmm. make sure it paints things mm-hmm. really well. Mm-hmm. It might be, but these things get aerosolized and they end up in the troposphere. Of course they do. And, and then we have... What I call the granddaddy of all nasty things besides Fukushima is the insertion at the upper troposphere of these nanoparticle paramagnetic molecules, thorium. One in 50 of them is radiotoxic and a radioisotope. Uh, aluminum, which in nanoparticle form, it goes directly to what calls middle ion syndrome, which even the non people without renal failure will concentrate in the basal nuclei of their brain, the caudate and patamin nucleus especially, so you can actually see them light up on a CT scan. I've been doing this for decades, so I see him light up. Wow! Yeah, Bill, what happened to all the people? Uh, I'm going to guess millions uh, in Vancouver, British Columbia, Seattle, environs uh, that uh, Arnie Gunderson nailed as having inhaled up to six hot particles, fuel fleas, as he called them, six hot radioactive particles per day within two weeks of Fukushima blowing. What happens to all those people? Are still blasting away at, let's say, right middle lobe. Left lower lobe, yeah. right right uh, middle turbinate of their na- nasal cavity, uh, right ethmoidal sinus. Wherever they happen to embed, they're going to stay there. They're there. And they're going to continue blasting away for yeah. as long as they want to be there. Exactly right. And if these have a long half-life, like uh, 36 years, you have to have it reduced to four half-lives or 120 years before they're below what's called the threshold to cause illness. We're talking about long half-life Cesium and strontium. Mm-hmm. And we're not even talking about plutonium and other ones that have enormous half lives of 24,900 years. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, so yep. I, I want people to understand biotoxins that can't degrade in the environment, which include a lot of them, so called medical drugs. If you think it's bad enough that I call them the toxic docs, or in the words of Sherry Rogers, he calls them dino docs, I call them toxic docs. The toxic docs, and literally I had a conversation with a doctor in the last two weeks, and he told me, don't read the black box warnings. This is a surgeon. I said, are you kidding me? I said, I'm a doctor. I said, I was a biochemist before I went into medicine and did in, in, What's he environmental saying that research. For? I don't get and it. And this guy looks at me like I'm some kind of moron. I said, are you nuts? I said, yeah, that's insulting for you to suggest that I should not read the black box warnings. They're a legal warning because they have killed people or caused significant harm. Exactly. And the reason is lawyers, who are also probably doctors, yeah. these are attorneys who have MDs or DOs or other behind their name, and have maybe two or three certifications and board specialties, they finally decided to kind of shove it, the big toxic medical system, and just kind of go for the gusto and go after their colleagues that don't have a clue. Hmm. And most doctors are practicing, and they don't read the literature that if you have someone, for example, with uh, heart disease, you don't give them a beta blocker if they have asthma, or you don't give them a calcium channel blocker if they're showing early dementia and they already have edema, or they, uh, lots of drugs. Chemotherapy is paint by numbers. Cancer is a gene problem, and people like Stanislaw Brzezinski from the Brzezinski Clinic have suffered unbelievable persecution now, the last decade or so, collaboration with the FDA. Yeah. But still, you can Google his name, you get all kinds of crap, and then there are other guys are sneaking up behind in other countries, Europe and, and here in America, trying to see if they can do gene-based cancer therapy because he's being successful at a bunch of different cancers because that's what cancer is. It's a bad talk between the mitochondria and specific genes that are turned off in the cell, and if you can turn the gene back on where it should be, the cancer, the cell starts to behave like a normal cell. That's what it is. And the problem is, you see, the medical system does not want to solve the problem. Now, there's a geopolitical. They don't want to solve the financial problem where people can actually save real wealth and pass it on to their family. They don't want to have non-toxic soil and food so people can grow all the food they need in their own home or garden. They don't want people... Uh, to have a job where they actually have, have enough life to have a social life with their family without working themselves to death. They don't want people to have, you know, uh, a, a reasonable commute. I mean, I don't understand here in a giant place like California, why don't we have high-speed monorail or some other system of transport instead of having everybody line up and park on the freeway? This is insanity. These people are like they're... Well, Walt, Walt Disney... Everywhere in the Walt world, any, any problem you approach is, is insanity. 
Walt Disney showed us the way in the 1950s with the monorail. It could have gone anywhere. Very simple to build. This right. Didn't happen. Too much and, and uh, influence the lobby. By that time, it would have been much higher speed. Oh, it yeah. It would have been real oh, yeah. safe and smooth, real quiet. Absolutely. Uh, they could have parks all around instead of all these stupid freeways. It would have been you know, green yeah. belts. And lakes and little ponds. Do you know, uh, you've been, okay, you've been in the valley, Bill, and many of you people listening, some of you live down there right now. Some of the major streets in the San Fernando Valley are extremely wide. If you've ever noticed how they're they're really wide, uh, and you say, well, why is this street so wide? There's a big planter down the middle, kind of like a little mini park. must be 100 feet wide. The reason those streets are so wide is because down the middle of those streets used to be the Pacific Electric trolley car lines. Right. And the right of way, the rights of way, about 85% of the rights of way are still there for the, where the old trolleys ran. The world's greatest mass transit system ever was the Pacific Electric line in Los Angeles, went from San, San Fernando to San Bernardino to Redlands to Newport Beach to Long Beach to downtown L.A. to Santa Monica. It went everywhere. A nickel, you could ride all day long. Look it up, the Pacific Electric. That's why those streets are so wide, some of them. And so what I'm trying to say is the rights of way are still there for electric mass transit. <clears throat> What what I'm saying and what you do on your show and what I try to do at the Nutramedical Report, that's Nutramedical.com, is we're trying to show the way that you have to start kind of separating yourselves. Communities like you and your little local group of homes, yourself, trying to protect yourself from insanity because by and large, you have to assume that even though all the positive things we're doing, we're not going to change the political system. It's going to decay. We're not going to change the environmental degradation by the maniacs. We just have to protect ourselves. And when the system collapses, all that's going to be left is us and the postman. Not the truth. Hold on, Bill. Just a second. We'll come right back with Dr. Bill after this. Okay, let's get right back to Dr. Bill. And, well, uh, I, got, I got an interesting comment uh, from an email of somebody listening live. Uh huh. I'm just going to say his first name, Bart, and he's pretty smart. He said the Bureau of Land Management is killing off as many horses and even burrows to prevent any post-apocalyptic self-reconstruction, no matter how timid. These ghouls have blocked off the exits. I'm afraid that we can expect to survive that this at any level. We're going to have to be forced to defend ourselves. The truth is that we could end this extermination-level contamination within just a couple of years if the elites are brought to heel. And, you know, they're a tiny sliver of evil humanity, and they are soulless. Um, <clears throat> what I want to do is switch uh, gears just a bit and, and kind of tie these together with why people, uh, for example, I talked to Dr. Millam today and we talked about autism. Uh, there's specific gene tests, organic acids we can measure, mm-hmm. uh, quantitative EEG. We're talking about specific tests of brain function, organic acids and genes that can show why someone's got autism. When I went to medical school in 1973, that's 41 years ago, the rate of autism was one in 3,800 to over 4,000. Mm-hmm. We would have a conference, and we're so surprised when we saw a child with autism. It's like, how did this happen? I thought it was a gene defect. And there are some genes that predispose to it. But you give a child stack vaccines. When you give food that's labeled, uh, laced with, with, with uh, gluten, laced with uh, Roundup, when you expose them to Wi-Fi networks to break down their blood-brain barrier, when you do all kinds of nasty things, what do you expect, especially if they have a problem with poor nutrition, de- demineralized soil, etc. So I just want to go through a few ideas of what we're going to be facing. In the next few years, if you look at someone who's over 65 years of age, at current, one in seven has a chronic atrial fibrillation. We're not just talking about periodic once in a while. We're talking about all the time. And most cardiologists, the first thing that they do is they're going to put you on rat poison or some of the newer, very expensive drugs, five, 600 a month, mm-hmm. like Xarelto. And if you bump yourself, you're going to bleed or you're going to form a scab. And you're seven going to new certified chemicals a day into our environment, folks. Seven new certified. And that's it. And you can pick those up on high pressure chromatography. And when you start, you know, labeling them, it's like, oh my gosh, these are every kind of industrial chemical mm-hmm. and they don't biodegrade. They, I mean, they're going to build up over centuries. So many if I so- might say one thing for you, uh, summer gardeners who hate weeds, my God, don't go near Roundup. 
please yeah, stay away from it. Pull the weeds. There are some natural weed killers out there, vinegar-based. Do some research. Don't buy that crap. Don't put it on your lawn. Don't put it on your property. Don't buy it. Please. Right. And some, by the way, some of the times when what they've done is they've now, the weeds have learned, genetically learned how to be toxic. Oh, they getting walk right around it. And so now there are super weeds. Go on, walk you know, like, right yeah. around it. Yeah. Yep. So I want to give you a few examples of what's happening. With the ultraviolet light, we're getting cataracts like crazy. So I'll just give my cataract protocol. Uh, Can C, developed by Dr. Babacheva in Russia, is a dimethyl carnosine that stops the cross linking. Nutri Trell, the only long acting alpha lipoic acid in the world we give, will protect your eyes. Neurogen is docosahexaenoic algae based, so it's good for vegans uh-huh. and vegetarians, and it stimulates. Neurogen stimulates new nerve cell regeneration and myelination. Neutrophos, phospholipids. you got to remyelinate those damaged nerve fibers in the back of the retina because people often have a cataract in the front of the eye. They don't, the doctor doesn't look at the fact the back of the eye, you have an inflamed eye. So if you don't deal with it in a few years, you're going to have wet or dry macular changes in retinopathy. You can regenerate the myelin? Yes, you can. In fact, I do it regularly, and we have people that we can prove to it on a T1 weighted MRI scan. We can show with the electro retinogram. They can show improvement in their Goldman field test. And I, there's a real simple test called a stick dot test I developed 30 years ago, where you take a red dot and you put it on a stick, and your black and white field and your color field are two different mm-hmm. fields, mm-hmm. and you'll see your color field expand. You can actually do it. Just challenge yourself, and you'll see the dot turn from black to to red. And if you see the red field expanding, it means you're your myelin is returning back to the optic nerve head. Real simple. Huh, I'll make a supreme krill. Krill oil, and we have the only krill oil in the world that's low temperature that gives the astaxanthin, which is the second most powerful antioxidant in the world, the most powerful is one that I include in my Nutri Defense called, poly, called polyphenon. It's a Nutri Defense. And then we give cell detox glutathione, the most powerful glutathione peroxidase, because what's going to burn your eyeballs is hydroperoxy radical and and nitroproxy radical. And then we have a product called Vision Max that if you take it daily, you're going to protect your vision because most people don't realize that with the current toxins, cell phones, for example, I have tons of people calling me that they're going blind on the side they use their cell phone. They're getting cataracts on that same side. They're getting memory problems in their temporal lobe, and they're getting cross-motor tract signs on the opposite side of their body because of the corticospinal tracts across. Mm-hmm. Not funny. I mean, this is serious stuff, and the regular doctors don't even pick up on it. I had a consult a, a month ago. How is a regular doctor going to diagnose anything anymore? Listen, I I, am, I can be on the phone and talk to someone in Norway and diagnose them better than their doctor right in their face. I believe it. And the reason is I ask them questions. I had this lady, I, she asked me, she said, I've seen all these doctors and they can't explain why I lost my vision. And she had taken basically a drug. She took Leviquin for a serious infection and she coughed. And then all of a sudden her vision went. I said, well, I know what's wrong with you. You took what's called a DNA gyrase 4 inhibitor, which caused you to separate in your retina when you coughed. You need to see a retinologist, get an electroretinogram, and in a 270-degree uh, orbital lens examination with a slit lamp examination with your ophthalmologist, and he'll mm-hmm. see the actual edge of the retina lift right off. Wow. She did it, and I, she has exactly what I said. A cough. Because I tell people, mm-hmm. I provide these consults free for mm-hmm. anybody on Earth, and I will teach doctors. I teach doctors every day. And I don't care what specialty. They can be a surgeon, mm-hmm. an orthopedic surgeon, mm-hmm. or a neurosurgeon, an eye surgeon. It doesn't matter what problem. Even if I don't have the answers, I'll even go back to the gene maps and try to figure out what gene is causing the problem, or organic acid. I'll go to my reference doctors and ask them questions, and I'll research it and fill up the library of medicine or genetics. Got it. And so I love to problem solve. To me, this is like solving puzzles. People say, well, you're real smart. I said, no, I'm inquisitive. I cause people a lot of grief because I ask questions. Uh, MS, people say they can't find MS. How prevalent do you think MS in this, is in society? They did a study at the university in Dublin, Ireland, 20 years ago, and they found out uh, that if they took 3,000 brains randomly and they did thin section scans and, and on the autopsy. Oh, hopefully and, from the deceased. Uh, go ahead. These are deceased. Yeah, they weren't live. You know, they, I don't think yeah. any Irishmen are going to volunteer their brain live to be sectioned. <laughs> unless they've had too many pints of Guinness. Got it. And um, guess what? They found that something like 50% had silent lesions in their brain. All, all over the place. Little tiny ones, big ones. And they didn't realize like 50%, that's a lot. Right? Hey, so what, what, are you, what are you tracing these to? 
these are basically dysmyelination where the oligodendrocytes, the cells that wind you around your your nerve fibers to cause high speed saltatory nerve conduction, they're been messed up with. So you caused, lose your caused by function. caused by EMF. You have little spots in your brain. What Usually EMF? Cell phones? Uh, EMF, just toxins, fluoridated uh, water. Okay. You name it, toxins, toxic viruses. Toxic lifestyle. It's all the, kinds of yard toxic. Toxic lifestyle. planet. That's what it is. Exactly. To- yeah. Hey, that's it. We write the next book. It's called Toxic Planet. That's it. Back in a minute. Hold on with Doctor Bill as we continue. Eighty feet. Deep at Fukushima Daiichi is yeah. where deadly tritium laced and worse radioactive water is now pouring out into the ocean. Eighty feet deep, the groundwater is hopelessly, irrevocably radioactive. Back in a minute. Yeah. Okay, back with Bill, and meanwhile, I, Fukushima it, continues Jeff, to... Jeff, I think we should yeah. uh, whip back to the WIP reactor. <laughs> oh, yeah. And well, uh, kind of integrate this uh, with the uh, whole approach of personalized protection against a, a toxic and crazy world. Yeah, we haven't heard the last of WIP by any means, yeah. folks, uh, yeah. at all. I'll, I'll give you the latest summary I got from my nuclear expert, Chris Harris, and other sources. Good. Uh, the first thing is we've got further proof that, uh, for example, the signs of uh, some of the containers were as high as 500 billion becquerels of plutonium and americium. Yeah, and what people need to understand, and this was get, gotten incorrect, was on E N E News last week and the week before. They kind of promote our show in hour three on on Thursday, where we have Chris Harris on. And what they made a mistake is they thought that it was simply a hydrogen explosion caused by uh, kitty litter, green kitty litter. I think that was. That, uh, I think that was a lie, uh, a convenient, right. a convenient canard. But, but, but they thought it was a dirty bomb, and here's where it's really pre- pretty critically dangerous. Uh, what happens is hydrogen explosion, including the ones with the zirconium cladding underground uh, at the uh, cooling rod assembly, of, you know, arrays underneath the reactor in these cooling pools. But these these uh, zirconite cladding, what they do is they generate tritium, deuterium, and hydrogen. And hydrogen can trigger an explosion that can push together critical mass and create nuclear explosions. And a nuclear explosion, you get what's called a neutron flux. Now, the best way to tell us if people are real smart is to actually go to Google Earth, or if they're flying nearby a few hundred miles away, because you can see a couple hundred miles, and you'll see blue lines coming out of Fukushima Daiichi right out of the ground. These blue lines are neutrons in beams hitting nitrogen molecules and generating a blue light, just like a rock show. Now... They'll, uh, they'll continue to go upward until they'll fade right into the fact where their air gets so thin you can't see a blue line anymore. But near ground, it's going to be really, really clear. You When you see a strong blue line, it means a strong nuclear flux. The, these things are happening at the whip reactor. When these things explode, so you'll get a neutron flux. It'll whip right through the ground like it's nothing. Those neutron fluxes will whip right through the dirt and keep on going. And that means very high energy. Uh, it also means that many more of these are sitting around that are not only going to cause a hydrogen explosion, but nuclear explosions. And they're not only there, they're at Hanford. And some of these have incredibly large amounts of fissionable material, which means the kind of material that you use to detonate a nuclear weapon, like plutonium. And I'll just use a story I used earlier today. One of the stories told by my nuclear buddies was of an engineer back in the, uh, you know, the time we were building our bombs back in the 60s. And he had a big ball of of uh, plutonium, and he decided that it was a good idea to tap it with a hammer. Very smart. Very smart. And when he tapped it, he saw a big flash. <laughs> now, that big flash was the last flash he saw. 
mm-hmm. because very shortly afterward he collapsed, ended up uh, going into semi-coma in the neurointensive care unit and cardiac unit because he started throwing off arrhythmias. Mm-hmm. And his bone marrow crashed, and within a couple of days, he died of, of septic septicemia, cerebral edema, and total collapse, and you know his total dissolution of his gut. So he had a neutron flux. Now, that's one of the many reasons why people can't walk around the plant because reactor one, two, and three are so radioactive; they're suffering neutron fluxes periodically because there's critical reactions. They can't even there, go in there, those buildings. There's a swirling energy mm-hmm. vortex around there because. It's not just releasing beta particles, which are electrons. These are literally like dirt devil, devils of t- millions of KEVs of energy of electron storms that are occurring around there. And then you got gamma rays. And the only way to block gamma effectively uh, is to use depleted uranium. So if you actually had containers that were kind of like little tunnels, you could block the gamma and probably most of the neutrons. If you had a de-deplete, you know, depleted uranium, uh, let's say containers all snapped together like Lego blocks. Um, the fact is no robot's going to survive there unless it has ferromagnetic chips, which are made at Atmel Corporation, Colorado Springs. This is classified. They're the only chips that are completely, uh, what's called neutron flux and gamma and electromagnetic pulse resistant. The tubes that the Russians use in their Tupolev jets and other things are only resistant to EMP. The fact is, unless they use either cabled robots or robots that are hydraulic, they're not going to survive going into that high environment. So they keep on talking about this, about doing this and doing that, and they removed about two-thirds of the cooling pool rods from Reactor 4. Now they're into the hard stuff, the stuff where it's all twisted like a pretzel. How are you going to pull out a pretzel? You can't. And if the fuel rod pellets fall to the bottom, especially because the seal is starting to degrade, if that water leaks out, you're going to have a hydropor- what's called a pyrophoric fire, where most of the fuel rod assemblies will literally turn to a nanoparticle vapor and enter the atmosphere. So our site, which is going to be detecting cesium-137, and it's going to bioaccumulate, we're going to see what I call a trend curve over the next, say, couple of years, where it's right now, say, in the high 30s or low 40s. In the next year or so, if that trend curve goes 60s, 70s, or we see a big wave, we know a catastrophe happened. I expect multiple catastrophes. I call burps of radiation from underground explosions that are, you know, building up underneath there, uh, venting. Uh, either on land or in the ocean. Correct. Uh, and in danger of a major superquake, which is, you know, we had one a month ago that was the biggest one since 311. Yes. So it's only a matter of time before this. And we're not just talking about Fukushima. We got the OI reactors. Other reactors are kind of structurally, they, I guarantee you, they haven't done, the Japanese government has not done, and the management companies oh, nothing. checked every weld, every structural building no to chance. make sure there's no subsidence. They x-ray all of it. It's not going to happen. No. They've not checked the, the what's called a torus to make sure that there's containment of the reaction right. within that torus because every nuclear plant's giving off thorium and and uh, and tritium. And the tritium, what it does is it intercalates in your DNA, it slides the codons in water one base pair or two base pairs over so your DNA can't replicate. And thorium, of course, is, itself is radioactive. It's going to be a strong beta and, uh, and gamma emitter, so you're going to have radioisotopes there. So that are going to fry your DNA, just like cosmic rays or whatever. And so the problem I see is that we're going to continue having bioaccumulation, and people may not say, I wonder why the rate of thyroid cancer, say in California or in Oregon or in Indiana, is up 400 to 800%. Right. Duh. And now that cesium is going up, I wonder why the breast cancer rates are into orbit. Uh, I wonder why everybody's glands are failing, thyroid, adrenal. Please, please uh, also don't male. just uh, think this is a West Coast phenomenon. It's in no, the no, soil. No, it's in the plants. It's in the vegetables. It's in the crops. It's being shipped nationwide. Yeah. My God, they're selling uh, actually Fukushima much ice less cream. In the West. Abro- yeah. It's actually less in the West Coast because we're at a low altitude. It has to be just like the water scraped out of the atmosphere. Ah, Most yes. of the stuff meeting the uh, atmosphere is at 36,000 to 25 to 36,000 feet. And so it's not going to hit until it gets to places like Idaho, Colorado, right. or goes or swoops down. Well, that's why Boise had the highest CPM in the country, and that's right. why or the it swoops down uh, into the Midwest. But now it's site. at lower altitudes because it's it's come over the top of the Rocky Mountains, and now mm-hmm. it hits different air masses that pull it down. And now you've got a mixing of hot and cold air masses, so you're going to get rain. So that's why you got the radioactive snow in Missouri last year. So I want people to kind of realize this might not really hit ground really bad until it gets to Europe. 
or and it's not just going over the over the pole, but you can do. So the next thing is that the whip is uh, doing replacement, uh, the filter replacement, which is kind of like stupid. This isn't going to do anything. TEPCO is talking about decommissioning the uh, plan for the Fukushima plant where you can't decommission something the, that is completely out of control. So this idea of decommissioning this plant is another fairy tale. And the real story that we're hearing now is that the, the bill is going to be passed on to America to clean up this ah, American, we're going to pay for it. Listen, that plant is not damaged. It's not crippled. It is destroyed, okay? It's, it's destroyed, done. yeah. It's finished. Well, and what they need to do is they need to deal with, one, with three different factors. Firstly, the two enemies are neutrons and water. So they need to stop the neutron flux, and that's to put boronated water down there and dehydrated out to turn into a, a crystalline sarcophagus. They need to stop moving or planning on moving anything anywhere. Second, they need to get the water completely buried, knocked off. In a way, it's dry pylons of starlight, which will take 16 to 20,000 degree temperature above the Fukushima plant, so all that water is diverted away from the plant. Uh, and they need to build a seawall below, and they do have the ALP system, the Advanced uh, Liquid Pilot the Project. The system failed. Well, Phil, there's, it's, there's, it's there's a new one going in there now. We, we have sent in now one. this week, believe it or not. And it's actually working correctly, but it may not last long. And we don't have the benchmarks to know how correctly that is. But the reports are from our engineering contacts that the ALP system is now working. Well, it took, what, a year? Three and a half years. I mean, it's ridiculous. They tried to get it going three and a half years, and they couldn't get it going to now. The next thing is they have this giant, super large container, of several hundred thousand gallons that they put there which means if this thing ruptures because they didn't put the other ones together correctly. They didn't even put the proper bottom rivets on the other tanks, so they were guaranteed to wear down. And the problem is all these things are housing radioactive water that's giving neutron flux that changes the crystal structural metal rivets right. and the plastic and causes degradation of these materials so they don't last their statutory length of time before they start losing structural integrity. <laughs> So it's basically, in apart. other words, all I can see is radiation and, and a, a death of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, there, are, there are some ways, you know, if you want to be really novel in terms of physics, um, subatomic particle physics, and I believe we have some of this technology, although it's put away in Warehouse 13. And there are subatomic particle harmonics, just like Tesla talked about with, Nick, with Madame Curie. And he said this in a letter back in the 1930s when she had a claw hand and was doing radioisotopes, and her hand had mutated so much for handling radium. And he said to her that he could mutate these isotopes and change their half-life, and he completely eliminate them to mm -hmm. non-radioactive daughter molecules. Mm -hmm. And what Nikola Tesla was saying is that there's like, like a, a diamond cutter. If you hit it along the right facet, mm -hmm. you create non-radioactive daughter molecules without any isotopes. Mm -hmm. So you could literally spray the oceans with the right harmonic frequency, and you'd reduce these to non-radioactive daughters that wouldn't be giving off beta particles or neutrons. I think that's possible. I think what we have is, is is we're being challenged to move to a new level of science because you can't clean the oceans and you can't, certainly can't filter it. No, I agree. And the filter literally is the life forms that are literally dying in our place and going to the bottom of the ocean floor. They're gone. We just don't know how many are gone. Could be 95%. Yeah, so personal protection. Know. Check it out at NutraMedical.com. Listen to the show. Contact me if you want help. You've got to get your health back. Believe it or not, it's slipping away. Even if you think you're healthy and you jog three or four miles a day and no. you don't have cardiac arrhythmias, no. No. all of the crap that you're being exposed to, electrotoxins, radiotoxins, and your own genetics, which you may not be aware of, you're moving toward out of your zone of compensation into a zone of, oh, my God. And you don't want that to happen. So 20 years is what I say, and that's all our top experts where human beings will be very difficult and hard-pressed to reproduce correctly and properly, where human beings will have any form of health without being on polypharmacy and going to yeah. memory care, as they call it. Yeah, yeah, memory care. They call it memory care where they want to make you a memory, and then they give you what they call hospice when they're ready to depart you. It's like yeah. a bathtub slide to hell. It's true. All right, we got to go. Yeah, so uh, I hope people will take a, a positive action. It's like I say, like Kevin Costner and the Postman, it's time to... Take care of yourself and your little community, your family, and inform as many people as you can. But a lot of people are just going to plug their ears and say, no, no I, I want to hear Unfortunately, that, that's the majority, Bill. Uh, but uh, Unfortunately. We, we've, we've done our best. Uh, including the toxic and dino docs. In the, in the right side column at rents, under the radiation box, which is just below the Fukushima box, there is something you should all look at. I tried to draw your attention to it en masse. West Coast... 
covered in massive 311 radiation. West Coast covered in massive 311 radiation. I want you to look at that video. This is the best model ever to show I how much. How, you what? I looked at that model. You sent me the link. Yeah. Scary, scary stuff. Scary stuff. Boom. Okay, and it shows it going all the way across the country to Vermont. That's why the Vermont dairy cattle had radiation in their milk. It's all there. Anyway, take a look at it. West Coast covered in massive 311 radiation. Look at the video. All right, thanks, Bill, very much. Talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Take action. Be informed. Take care of yourself and realize that there is a way, but it means you're going to have to become the model, the example. You're going to have to do something for yourself. You actually actually have to do something. All right. Yeah, exactly. Don't just sit there. All right. Thanks, Bill. Take care, everyone. Take action.